in that case, you know, that network may not get the loan they want. And when they don't get the loan they want, you know, it starts to hurt their business. And so it asked a golden question. Of course the media didn't report Bashir's admission. They used people to get the lie they want out to accomplish the evil, wicked deed like taking Michael Jackson down, which they eventually they did, but it took them till 09. They thought they would get it done in 04 or 05. But once they've used you and they don't need you anymore, they'll reward you with a show. I guess Bashir got a show with ABC or somebody for a while. And uh, when they don't need you anymore, they discard you. Just like they take our, our sons and daughters, they send them to these unconstitutional, illegal wars. And I, I know I maybe sound like a liberal, but believe me, I'm not a liberal. Uh, I'm not an arch conservative, but I'm not a liberal either. I, I, I believe in the Constitution will keep us safe and free if we can just stick to it. And that's where we as a people in America have failed. We have failed to hold our elected representatives to their oath of office to uphold the Constitution. So you get people like Tom Snedden. They get in office. They start violating people's rights. They get away with a little bit and then a little more and a little more. And finally, they get to the point where they think, I can do anything. I can get anybody convicted of anything I want because I'm Tom Snedden and I'm the power in this county and I'll do what I want to do with whoever I want to do it. And that was, that was Snedden's mindset. And then he ran into Tom, Thomas Mesereau and Susan Yu. And when he, before the trial was over, I can tell you, he was babbling to himself in the courtroom. Snedden was having a mental breakdown. And it took uh, Auchincloss, they took a break at Auchincloss and Ron Zonin were patting him on the shoulder and told him, you know, put on a smile so the media doesn't see you unhappy. And they walk out with frozen smiles. Snedden was not doing well. Anybody got another question? Who's claiming they got herpes from Michael? Well, yes, I heard you fine. You want me to answer a question about something I've not even heard of. Um, my guess is you're going to see people accusing Michael of a lot of things until we get this documentary done. Once the documentary is done and people see the real Michael, and know what the real Michael was like, I don't think you're going to see these things, but I have no information to believe any of that has any substance and truth at all. I, I, <laughs> you know, uh, Snedden thought he had Michael nailed because he had two little liars that would uh, help him facilitate a conviction. And it didn't work. Now, in order, I don't know, in order to prove you got herpes from Michael, number one, you'd have to prove that you had sexual contact with Michael. You would have to prove that you had herpes or she had herpes, uh, whoever this woman is. And then you'd have to prove that Michael had herpes. And to do that, you'd have to get his, his medical records. Is it possible that you could prove such a thing? I don't know. Um, but I very much doubt it because of the things that I have seen since the trial ended, I believe you're going to see people just throwing mud at Michael. Uh, and I've got to admit, I wasn't a Michael fan uh, of his music. I, I do like some of his songs. Um, Man in the Mirror, I think, has become one of my favorites since he died. Um, but I think this man was not of the caliber. Was he heterosexual? Absolutely. And in fact, he's got a, uh, a girlfriend uh, that's actually moved up here to Santa Maria since his death. She wasn't living in this area before, but uh, somehow she feels closer living to him here. And uh, I've seen her photographs and a short little video clip she has of him and her. He was very definitely uh, a heterosexual man who liked girls. But did he give somebody herpes? I mean, to me, that's insane because uh, Michael was a very responsible person. Yeah, I mean, 
you look at the way he did his performances, even if you don't like his stage performance, and, and I didn't like his you know, crotch grabbing routine in one of those video tours, but what he did, he did it meticulously. It, it, it wasn't an accident, he did, didn't do things haphazardly. Michael was very protective of his image and this young lady that's, well, she's not that young anymore, but uh, this woman that was his girlfriend for a short time dated Michael here. Um, she's keeping the promise not to ever publish the photos that she's got with Michael. And I can't understand it because Michael's dead. And I, uh, usually death terminates a contract. But she somehow feels Michael's not really dead that some, somehow he's going to he's going to be found to be alive maybe not in the flesh but that he's alive in the spirit and she's keeping that promise never she showed me just because I, I just doubted her completely and said you, you know if Michael had secretly dated anybody I think somebody would have leaked it to me because I've had a lot of women try to leak things to me and say I was dating Michael and then I say show me the proof most of them can't show me any proof at all. Uh, she could. But she won't let me have copies of that. Um, but she's keeping in her mind her promise to Michael that the time that they shared is just theirs and nobody else's and she's not going to share it. And uh, I can't, you know, that's, that's her choice. Uh, I mean, he's dead now, so I mean, you, usually you make a contract, oral or written with somebody, the contract ends when you're dead, although you can make contracts to go on after you're dead. I don't think Michael ever contemplated uh, this time that we're in right now would ever come to be. But I think, you know, I wouldn't hate her if she went to the media and said, look at these photos, you've never seen this and they paid her $100,000 just to get their hands on the photo, I certainly wouldn't be angry uh, because Michael's dead. You can't hurt the man. All, all he could do is prove that uh, he had no homosexual tendencies. Well, <laughs> if you turn out to be right, I'm, I'm not laughing at you, but if you turn out to be right, then maybe this gal is doing the right thing because Michael's alive and she breaks the confidence. And uh, I don't either, but I, I can't believe that Michael would give anybody herpes. Uh, I think Mike, Michael was just too responsible. He was, you could see in the Bashir films that we saw in the trial that I don't think have ever been, you still haven't been released to the public, but those of us that were at the trial, we saw hours and hours of the brochure tape that was not shown. And in, in that tape, you saw Michael as a good dad. He was a loving, caring dad. Um, I don't know any other way to say it. He was just a, a confident, um, reasonable, loving dad and it's uh you know it's sad i i wish before they gave all the films back i'd gone to the court and got permission to copy all that for sure document so i would have what they showed in court i wish i'd done that um just didn't think of it because i figured the jury vindicated him Proved I was right when I announced uh, a month or so before the jury did that he's going to be found not guilty. So I felt I was vindicated. Michael was vindicated. Uh, what, what more is there to do? But I should have noticed, uh, and I look back, if you all think back, how many are listening right now? How many are out there? Looks like we got 50, 54 people listening. Um, that first week after the jury verdict, there was a lot of scuttlebutt. And I wish some of you would go find those media clips for that first week after June 13th. And the media was asking questions like, what's wrong with the jury? How could the jury get this wrong? I would like to get those clips 
because we may use them in the documentary or we may redo them to look exactly like the real thing because that first week shows you how twisted even the national media was. Just like Snedden said, I'm going to get you, Michael, I'm going to get you, that makes you guilty because I said so. Well, the media says, well, we know you're guilty, Michael, because Snedden said so, and we believe it, and so you're guilty. And when the jury said, no, you're not, the man's walking out of here free because all your witnesses were caught in their lies. And not only that, your lies were terrible lies. They were bad lies. They weren't even good lies. They were easily ripped to shed, uh, shreds. And I said to uh, uh, Majestic, if you know who uh, Majestic the Magician uh, is a close friend of the Jacksons. The Magnificent, that's right. Majestic the Man Magnificent. Uh, there's a video clip on my YouTube where him and I are talking right after the trial. And I said to Majestic, uh, you know, actually Michael didn't really need a defense. The evidence was so bad that there really wasn't any need to contract. These people were caught in their lies. <laughs>